we get when we sin, but nevertheless, we know that we've got a friend in God, in Jesus Christ, and that we want to live in a better world, then we need to be found worthy and deserving of living in that better world. Keep a pure heart. It says, it's written that, that those with a pure heart will see good. They will see God. Okay, because God and good are like the same thing, right? Anything good came from above if it's truly good, and it's God. So, you know what? That's what I'm shooting for. I want to go to a better world. Sure, I would love to see some change in this world. I mean, it would, it would, it, I almost can't imagine how good it would feel to see the worm turn. The end of the age and the beginning of the new age, when really it's going to be like Jesus Christ returns and is running the show, whether this is a metaphor or otherwise, Okay, that the return of Christ, but it's going to take something big, momentous, biblical level, unprecedented in all of human history to change this about. We've been for thousands of years in the in the age of the, the money lovers, the masters of misery. Okay, that's who they are. And they've been running roughshod over decent humanity for a long time. They, they rape, pillage and plunder us. Okay, that's what they do. They're thieves and they're murderers. And they're liars and cheaters and swindlers. That's by the fruit. You'll know them. That's who they are. All right. I'm on to comment about some recent current events and other talking points. Last week, uh, let's see. I couldn't remember the term. It came to me later. When you get married, you want to protect your assets. It's called a prenuptial, right? Prenup. I don't know. For the life of me. I mean, I, I've used the term a billion times. Well, I, it's like it just delayed. But I think it should be the norm. And anybody that's, oh, no, I don't want to prenup. That should be held with suspicion. Well, then maybe, you know, if you got anything to do with marrying me for my assets, bye-bye. So, yeah, I think it should be the norm that it, that it's weird and out of place and to be held with suspicion if somebody doesn't want to prenup. And we marry outside our classes. I think there'd be a lot of strife in the whole realm of holy matrimony, which is from God. He wants us to get married. The two become one flesh and don't separate it. I mean, that's... You know, with my my first and only wife I ever had, God, I wanted to keep her so much. And that's, you know, that's the emphasis of why, you know, I've had a hard time getting reinvolved with them because I felt like I had the best woman. But, you know, I know there's other women out there. And, you know, I feel like I'm living at best 25% of what I could be experiencing. And that's for all single men. And with a woman, it goes to 75%. It goes more than 50%. It goes to 75%. But even with a woman, I mean, you can't, you don't know. They can always change their mind and leave you. I mean, even if you're married and whatever. I mean, you just don't know. There's no, You can't count on anybody. So you go back to 25%, you know. But I'll never be content being a single man. There's no way. Not after having tasted what it feels like to be whole. Because to me, that's all it is. It's like, you know, that's much more emulating God is being male and female is to have a beloved. That's the most precious thing. I mean, guys that know their values, okay, know up from down, they know they'd rather have a good woman, a beloved, okay, than $10 billion. Ladies, yes, you're very valuable. But don't let it go to your head. Don't take advantage of it. Be nice to your man. Build him up, okay, the two of you. I mean, you, you know, please God together in your marriage and then you're going to find greater happiness you'll be a better example for everybody it's a beautiful thing i think it's great i love to see people fall in love and hook up forever you know i think it's beautiful that's all i want i want one woman to go through eternity with and i'm never going to be satisfied i'm going to be experiencing about 25 percent of what i could without it <clears throat> without her you know, last week I mentioned this song by The Who, Pure and Easy. I love that song, beautiful song. But uh, I forgot to make the point I was making because I did a Google search and their definition of the lyrics show that it said that um, all men are bored with other men's lies. Lie. Okay, but then you go on like, I think it was Lyrics Genius or whatever I went on. It says... What I always thought it said was all men are bored with other men's lives, not lies, lives. And that's true. I mean, every guy kind of just to protect his own little ego as a defense, he kind of thinks of himself as the cock of the walk. He's the uh, the cream of the crop. He is the, um, he's the one, you know, he's the cat's meow, right? So true or false, it's the way guys are, ladies. You know, if I couldn't write my thoughts down, I'd go stark raving mad. 
You know, TMZ's Harvey Levin, I don't think he does much to help uh, heal racism in this country. He seems to promote it and perpetuate it. I don't get that guy sometimes. He never points out, this is, this is about economic injustice. That's what people are angry about. Nobody wants to be enslaved. He won't point that out. And I'm sure he doesn't consider himself a stupid man. So, see, I just don't understand. Is he being disingenuous? or <clears throat> you know, Anytime people make me doubt their motives, I... I get a little crazy because he seems like a nice guy, and I know he doesn't think of himself as a stupid man, but why doesn't he point that out, the imbalance, the wealth imbalance in this country, and all this is what it's all about, the, all the unrest? God, be honest, Harvey, that's all I'm saying. And we're the least racist nation on earth. For God's sake, we hired a black man to be our president. As much as I excoriate Obama for being instrumental in that bailout of 08, I still voted for the man. The proud moment in American history. Stop dividing us, Harvey. You know, I was talking about how terms have devolved. The term shrewd used to mean evil. Now it means astute. And the term anti used to mean a substitute or a stand-in, and now it means against or opposed to. It's interesting, isn't it? The etymology of words. Boy, that uh, mother cougar that guy ran up against while he was running on a trail in Utah, that was really something. That footage was, now I never saw anything like it. It was incredible footage that guy got. He was on TMZ Live yesterday. You know, on uh, Max Kaiser and Stacey Herbert always promoting Bitcoin. Well, you know what? I don't know much about it. I don't own a fraction of a Bitcoin, but it's not fungible. People want cold, hard cash. It's the ultimate fungible asset you know and, and i bitcoin i don't see it with that i mean it might be good for investors just sitting on a dead money i don't know but i don't like it that's just me you know one note on racism we're all african according to a lot of anthropologists we're just we've just developed different characteristics different skin tones that's the only difference all right friends i'm on to some thoughts from the last week or two <laughs> excuse me I believe that once we have walked through that universal and impending inevitability, that thing we refer to as death, that thing Jesus referred to as sleep, we will find ourselves around the people we deserve to be around. You know, I want to mention one thing that, uh, you know, there is something tangible that we can all do to help. And that is to not live extravagantly, particularly when it comes to your housing costs, your cost of living. Okay, do what you can to keep that down. It's like a boycott. Okay, boycotts can be very effective. So this is one thing you could do is just demand that your money be worth something relative to housing. Okay, all these welfare programs out there with $50 billion a year, but yet we see all this homelessness. I mean, that's frightening. I mean, obviously, by empirical evidence, there's no housing dollars left. They're scrambling. We need more money. And, oh, we'll do one survey after another. We'll, we'll, we'll do a, you know, do a count of the people out there and, uh, you know, come up with something. Uh, you know, we get a point of housing czar and all this crap. And it's like it never ends, but nothing gets fixed. It just gets worse. So that's something that we can all do. I mean, it's unpleasant. I said, what do you mean, live below my means and, and frugally? Uh, on my housing costs, uh, you know, because uh, for other people, well, friends, I mean, look, we're all in this thing together, man. We're all on the same ship of fools. We're one race, one species. We're one family. And that's how God wants us to live. I don't have, I don't, you notice, I don't waver on saying that. I mean, that's unequivocal. That's incontrovertible. That's irrefutable. That's inarguable. That's God, I mean, that's obviously God. It's so logical and simplistic. A little kid can understand it. Just be honest and understand that's how God wants us to live, to please him, to find happiness. So when we're ready, we'll get relief. He'll, he'll, he'll help us. But we got to get our head screwed on straight here, man. You've got to care about other people just like you care about yourself and your kids. Our welfare is inextricable. Your welfare is my welfare. My welfare is your welfare. And on and on. That's just the way it is. That's the way God made it. We cannot escape it. We can evade it temporarily. But we're just, we're faking ourselves out. Nobody else. God isn't, God isn't tricked. God isn't deceived. If there's one thing he's not, he's not stupid. So we'll all, we will be accountable. And he will decide if we're found worthy and deserving of inheriting a better world. Did we plan for it? Did we cultivate it in our hearts and minds? 
a world about entirely without any form of money. And nobody's going to be that that wants any form of money. Because all it represents is one way for a man to get advantage over another, to steal from another man. That's as simple as that. It was invented. It is not a creation from God. It's not a gift from God. 